this is the drive shaft or the prop shaft I just got from Sterling Steels, which is this huge shop that sells just stainless steel. Pretty cool. This is Kulali and her owner Garth. Garth was a successful engineer who started building Kulali as his final life project. Unfortunately, Garth never got to see her finished. I've been lucky enough to take the challenge on of completing her build and one day to sail her around the world. Similar to Garth, I'm a passionate engineer who loves to know how things work and how to build things. Join me on this journey to bring Garth's dream to life. This is Sailing Kulali. So now we are going to bore this out to 25 mil, starting with the drill. So that's just a touch under 25. So that's been bored out there. So it's just under 25. <coughs> this shaft is a H9, which means it's either 25 or slightly under 25. So we're just gonna check whether this shaft now fits into that hole. So that did not fit in the hole. So I'm gonna machine it out a touch more. I do want it to just get in the hole. And then I've got a honing tool that's coming to, to finish off that surface nicely in there. So I've machined that back even more to 25 just over and what I've realized is this pipe or this tube or uh, this rod which has a very high tolerance it's a ground finish to H8 I believe but it because it's been cold cut this end is slightly deformed so I need to chuck that in the lathe to actually cut that um, and make it so that it's um, not deformed here and you can see an exaggerated version of that here so if you have a look at that you can see how that's tapered in so I bet I could get this side in but that side is too thick so let's try so yeah you could see that that shaft actually went in a little bit um, but yeah so I don't want to take off too much more because I need to flip it around and do the same thing this way. Um, so, and then it's gonna be honed as well. So I think I might just leave it as it is, flip it around, do the other one, do the other boring process, um, and then get the honing to hold it out, hone it out, put the drive shaft in, fix the drive shaft up, and then check the fit. All right, so I changed my mind. I'm gonna cut this off. Then I'm gonna grind that on a, a little chamfer and then use that as a test piece. You can see that just at this end, about that far in, there's a bit of deformation, but here it's all perfect. So I'll chop that off and then use that as a test piece. All right, so this is that um, pin that we just made. So you can see here, um, there's a small chamfer on it and this is the straight portion, this is the cutoff bit. So we should see if this will go in. So yeah, it's still a bit too tight, so we'll machine it a little bit further until that's a super tight fit. All right, so I machined that again a little bit more. And now, it 
So he just goes in with no play, and then listen to this. <laughs> that's pretty cool so that's the air pressure and it and it's sealing obviously which is quite exciting isn't it so that's a pretty good fit so i would call that <sighs> we'll see the tolerance fits but obviously it's not a perfect fit but it's not bad so i'm, I'm gonna still hone the inside of that um, a little bit of eccentricity is actually needed to create a wedge for the lubrication film for the bearing, the journal bearing here to actually work. This is called a journal bearing. So if you made it perfectly fit, there wouldn't be enough space for the oil to create a, a hydrodynamic wedge, I think it's called, a, like a wedge of lubricant that keeps the shaft from wearing away. So it's good to have a little bit of tolerance, but the whole idea was to get it to be a really tight fit on this side. Woo! That's cool. Um, so the whole idea was to get it really nice and tight on this side. We're gonna flip it over. It's probably gonna be really hard to line it up. So in any case, I wanted this side to be the perfect alignment and this side to be slightly loose because the boring bar obviously can't go all the way through. Um, and this lathe is obviously too small, but we don't need this whole thing to be the bearing It should only be probably about that big But yeah, so tomorrow we'll uh, Flip this over and machine the other side All right, that's it for today. So we managed to bore out this side of the prop prop hub and got the drive shaft uh, from sterling steels today, which is this 25 mil drive shaft. Um, the idea choosing 25 instead of 25.4 is that if ever um, this prop bearing wears out or the other components wear out I can always increase the thickness of the drive shaft which is cool so um, but I believe it's meant to be 25 anyways. Uh, and the reason for choosing a 316 stainless steel instead of something like a um, Aqualoy 22 is that this motor is only 33 or 30 horsepower and that means it won't really see that much load. The Aqualoy stuff um, is more for big horsepower motors and so not, not really necessary but we shall see. So tomorrow we're just going to flip over the prop hub, um, line it up as best we can and then bore again the same thing here and the dream is that the shaft is going to go straight through um, and it's not going to be eccentric um, uh, because of the flip. So in the perfect world we would have had a boring bar long enough to go through but this lathe is just too small for it um, and yeah so we'll see what happens tomorrow. <laughs>